The Lord be with you. And also with you. Welcome to Emmanuel Lutheran Church for this, the 14th Sunday after Trinity. Our liturgy shall be divine service setting two, is found on page 167, following our opening hymn, hymn 849. Confession and Absolution on page 167. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But, but if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most, Most merciful God, God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you with thought, word, and deed, and have not kept the Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 
Behold our shield, O God. Look on the face of your anointed. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. My soul longs, yes, faints for the courts of the Lord. Blessed are those who dwell in your house, ever singing your praise. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. Behold our shield, O God. Look on the face of your anointed. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save. Comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia.
O Lord, keep your church with your perpetual mercy, and because of our frailty we cannot but fall. Keep us ever by your help from all things hurtful, and lead us to all things profitable to our salvation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The Old Testament reading for the 14th Sunday after Trinity is from Proverbs chapter 4. Hear my son and accept my words, that the years of your life may be many. I have taught you the way of wisdom. I have led you in the paths of, of, of uprightness. When you walk, your step will not be hampered. And if you run, you will not stumble. Keep hold of instruction. Do not let go. Guard her, for she is your life. Do not enter the path of the wicked. and Do not walk in the way of the evil. Avoid it. Do not go on it. Turn away from it and pass on. For they cannot sleep unless they have done wrong. They are robbed of sleep unless they have made someone stumble. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. But the path of the righteous is like the light of dawn, which shines brighter and brighter until full day. The way of the wicked is like deep darkness. They do not know over what they stumble. My son, be attentive to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Let them not escape from your sight. Let them within your heart. Keep them within your heart. For they are life to those who find them and healing to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all vigilance. For from it flow the springs of life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
the epistles from Galatians chapter 5. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, to keep you from doing the things you want to do. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law, and those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and its desires. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise for the Holy Gospel. According to St. Luke, the 17th chapter. You, On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, he was met by ten lepers who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice, and he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered, Were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated for the hymn.
In the name of Jesus, amen. Fear is paralyzing. Faith is uplifting. Fear focuses upon results. Faith is concerned with being truthful and caring for the faithful so that nourished faith may be an action. When we're worried about what we don't have, we take for granted and often neglect what we have been blessed with. Like today's sermon text, thankfulness is for more than just Thanksgiving Day. Return and give praise to God. From God can nothing move me. He will not step aside, but gently will reprove me and be my constant guide. He stretches out his hand. In evening and in morning, my life with grace adorning, wherever I may stand. The Lord does gently rebuke us for shallow thankfulness. That is a side effect of living in a blessed land. America is not the promised land of the Lord, but it is a good land. And to use biblical terminology, a land of brooks of water, wheat and barley, vines, olive trees, and honey. It is easy to forget that the source of all that we need to support this body and life is God. Our Lord himself saw shallow thankfulness in St. Luke chapter 17. Have mercy upon us, we hear. These are words that we echo in the Kyrie. We too call upon God to be merciful to us. And just as our Lord responds to us, Jesus responds to ten men afflicted with a terrible skin disease. He who is given to proclaim good news to the poor, to proclaim liberty to the captives, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, has done so. These ten are poor in spirit captive to, oppressed by their affliction, and believed that Jesus could heal them. Hence, Lord, have mercy on us. They responded in faith, and Jesus said, Go. And they went to show themselves to the priest, and on the way they were cleansed. God-given faith responds to the voice of the Lord. It says, Amen and then goes and does the amen, trusting in God. God's words are not mere words. They accomplish what they say. In this case, healing. And these people needed healing. Lepers were untouchable. A person wanted to stay far away to avoid getting that infection. The book of Leviticus laid out regulations to avoid spreading such diseases. There were boundaries not to be crossed for the safety and health of all involved. Yet the one, capital O, who is clean, crosses over the boundary to those who are unclean in order to make them clean again. Jesus' actions would have shocked the religious leaders in his day. And don't they still shock people today? We're going to ask difficult questions too. Are there some kinds of people you'd rather not be with, talk to, or consider helping? Do you currently carry a grudge? The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. This is a unique concept, especially as we consider why. God took upon human flesh to restore our relationship with Him and our relationships with one another. We poor sinners are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against God and our neighbor by thought, word, and deed. And Jesus perfectly clean, perfectly sinless, came to take away our uncleanness and bear it himself on the cross. In exchange, you get a bright white robe of righteousness, and that is how God sees you in Christ, sinless and clean. 
Leviticus 14 specifically called upon a cleansed leper to present himself to the priest in the temple and present lambs for sacrifice. The temple was where one sought the presence of God. The temple was where sacrifices were made by the priests with animals as the substitutes. The one who returned to Jesus, the one man in our text today who returned to Jesus realized by faith that there, in Jesus, God was present in the flesh. He didn't have to go all the way to the temple. In the flesh, he found God, and he fell down and worshipped with thankfulness and praise Jesus the very flesh, our substitute that was to be sacrificed on the altar of the cross for him, for you, for me. This Samaritan's actions exemplify a life of worship, returning to the Lord after the Lord had already richly blessed him, praising God with a loud voice and falling on his face in humility at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. This is a pattern for our lives as forgiven sinners. So richly have we received, so richly Should the baptized lead lives of thankfulness and praise, worshiping God with our lives, and setting aside time to praise Him with a loud voice in His house? It's why it's here. Most importantly, we continue to receive His gifts in the divine service and pray that God would lead us to realize that He gives us all good things. You've been blessed. This congregation has been blessed. Any remaining stress is a result of living by fear rather than by faith. If Jesus can heal leprosy, he can give you comfort in the midst of your fear. And to whom did Jesus say, rise and go your way, your faith has made you well? At the end of the text, Jesus is speaking to a Samaritan. Much has been said about Samaritans, especially in recent weeks. They didn't get along with the Jews. There were horrible names back and forth. It was shocking, surprising for Jesus to speak to a Samaritan woman at the well in the heat of the day. It was virtually unthinkable to hear about last week's good Samaritan. Now, Only one out of ten who were healed returns to thank Jesus, and he was a Samaritan. This is a foretaste of the mission of the church. This is a foretaste of the makeup of the church. All people, Jew and non-Jew, Gentiles, folks like us, are part of God's family. And we lead forgiven lives of thankfulness and praise so that we can reach out to those who society deems as unclean or canceled, so that by hearing the pure gospel, they may be made truly clean because of Jesus' sacrifice of himself. Sometimes, those whom we think of as unclean are near to us, in the same congregation, the same pew, or even the same rooftop at home. If I have offended or sinned against you, forget me. Forgive me. Let me know. Let us be reconciled. If you have sinned against someone else, or even if someone else has sinned against you, be the first to go to the other. Be reconciled. Be forgiven in Christ. Rise and go your way, Jesus says to the cleansed Samaritan. Jesus is going on his way to Jerusalem where he will himself be the sacrifice and himself the priest, offering himself for all of us because all of us are unclean in trespasses and sins. He told another forgiven sinner to go and sin no more. Jesus now says to you, rise and go your way. 
Make your way his way. Follow him to Jerusalem, to the cross and the empty tomb. Learn from him that trials and pain are part of something about living in a fallen world. Follow him as you go about your day and your days of living in thanksgiving to the Lord every day. In faith, look forward to your own day of resurrection, your ultimate Easter on the last day. Jesus' miraculous healings show us that the kingdom of God has come in Christ. They are a foretaste of the coming of the kingdom of God in all its fullness on the last day. And while we wait for that last day, we continually return and give thanks to God. For thus the Father willed it who fashioned us from clay, and his own Son fulfilled it and brought eternal day, the Spirit now has come. To us, true faith is given. He leads us home to heaven. Oh, praise the three in one. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The Nicene Creed is found on page 174. Please stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. By the atoning death of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In thanksgiving for his gifts of forgiveness, life, and salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the church and her ministers, to give all pastors courage to embrace gladly the crosses of their office, and to aid all Christians in bearing the reproach of the world, the attacks of Satan, and the temptations of the flesh, in the confidence of Christ's redemption, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the church, which is the family of God, that she may be a home filled with sisters and brothers to care for one another, a refuge for the weary, a companion for the lonely, a safe place for those who are afraid, and a help to us in every burden. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who make, execute, and judge our laws, that their eyes may be turned toward the Lord, and that they would receive wisdom and strength to faithfully carry out their duties. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all in need of our prayers, including the Reverend Neil Carlson, Eric, Darla, Charlotte, Joanne, Rodney, Ian, Bob and Bev, Evelyn, Pat, Leslie, Ken, Barb, Richard, Denise, Hannah and Brian, Bill and Judy, Tom, Rebecca, Bob and Chris, Cliff, Matt, Margot, Robert, Jacob, Paul, and Tyson, that just as Christ showed mercy, so he would also turn their sicknesses to health and their troubles to joy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, 
For all who receive the body and blood of Jesus in the salutary gift of the Lord's Supper, that they would receive his blessing of forgiveness and praise his name with thankful hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all the baptized called to be the Father's own possession, that our lives may bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit's, According to the image of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Mighty God, you have done great things for us, most of all delivering us from death to life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Mercifully hear our prayers and answer them according to your will for the sake of your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. 